What's up fish friends, it's Alex here, your friendly reef talk. And today we're gonna to be talking about high-end corals and the ever-increasing prices. Now, if this is your first time at the channel, I pour out a video every Friday with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out. Right, let's take a look. When you first start out in the hobby, you probably look at corals that cost around the $30 or £30 mark. Things like pulsing xenia, mushrooms, and leather corals like toadstools in Kenya tree. Basically anything that's cheap, hardy, and will put up with all of the classic noob mistakes you're likely to make. Now in my opinion, it doesn't need to be that way. There are much more colourful and interesting corals that are still well suited to beginners, and you can check out my suggestions in the video at the top of the screen. And the more time you spend in aquatic shops, meeting other reefers, and looking at other people's tanks on YouTube, forums and Facebook groups, the more you'll come to realise just how spectacular corals can look. Unsurprisingly, the most striking corals usually command the highest price. That's just basic economics. The most desirable things in life are usually the most expensive, particularly if demand is higher than supply. But with high-end corals, the effect seems to be exaggerated. More and more now you see tiny but shiny frags of only a couple of centimetres fetching hundreds or even thousands of pounds. It's a trend those of you watching from the States will be familiar with, and it's been growing for a while now outside of America. And that's what this video is about. Are tiny coral frags worth huge money, or has the world gone mad? Well, let's take a look at the pros and cons. Starting with the cons, because they're more fun. As an example, I recently bought two frags of SPS corals from Euro Corals in Germany. They cost £150 each, and are less than an inch tall. In keeping with the modern trend, they have ridiculous names, instead of identifiable scientific names. These two are called EC Psychoberry Acro, and EC Pink Floyd Acro. So they cost more than you'd pay for an entire wild caught colony of something stunning like strawberry shortcake, and you don't get to see them in the flesh, so you have to rely on the vendor to take accurate photos. Many vendors don't take accurate photos, and either take pictures through an orange lens, or play around with the saturation and other colour settings in Photoshop. So the coral you get can look nothing like the picture. And there must be a temptation for some vendors to start fracking corals early, before they're properly settled. And as if that's not enough, a tiny frag isn't likely to look spectacular straight off the bat anyway, so you'll have to wait for up to a year or so for it to grow out and settle into your tank. And even then, your tank is likely to have different lights, nutrient levels and trace element levels to the vendor, which might well mean different colouring in the coral you end up with. Or you might find the coral only looks its best under blue lights, which means you've either got to have blue lights on all the time, or take the hit on looks for 90% of the day. The current export ban on Indonesian corals means many of the more desirable corals in the hobby are less commonly available now, which of course pushes these prices even further up. And that's not just restricted to shops. When a hobbyist grows out these high-end corals, they too frag off small lumps and sell them for high prices. Those prices are usually lower than shops, but that's not always the case, and I've heard dozens of reefers who've been in the hobby for 10 or 15 years or more tell me that there's a lot less goodwill in the hobby for that sort of thing than there used to be. And these high prices for tiny frags isn't just restricted to SPS corals. For years now, single zoa polyps have been changing hands for hundreds and sometimes even thousands of pounds. And that trend spreads down the line to lower end corals. So you can still end up paying a fellow hobbyist 20 pounds for a single polyp of something common as muck like a sunny D zoa. I sometimes wonder if the simple fact that corals are sold as tiny frags makes them more desirable to people, especially if they have a crazy name to match. And I'm not criticising you if you've done that, I've fallen into the very same trap myself on more than one occasion. So all of this is total madness and a proof that a fool and his money are easily parted, right? Well, not quite. Let's take a look at the pros. First and foremost, tiny bit shinies do tend to be the most spectacular corals in the hobby. I've spent hours looking over the Euro Corals website, dreaming about placing an order for a grand's worth of stunners. One day, I'd love to have an entire tank stocked solely with the most spectacular corals available. I'm talking home wreckers, Walt Disney's, and so on. It cost an arm and a leg, but it's no exaggeration to say you could end up with one of the most beautiful tanks in the world. But it's not just about looks. A properly settled frag from a reputable coral farm is likely to be much more hardy than a wild caught coral that's been shipped halfway across the world and transferred through several holding facilities. I've never had much luck with wild caught SPS corals, and losing two or three colonies that have cost you north of 100 quid each really hurts the old wallet. The best coral farms will keep corals for several months or even a year or more before they start fragging, so you get a second generation coral that's used to captive conditions and is less likely to die, less likely to have pests, and more likely to retain those lovely colours. 
And buying small frags makes placement much easier. For a start, putting a large coral in place can be hard work, but also with small frags you can choose the perfect spot much more easily and let them grow out into their natural patterns next to other corals whose colours complement each other. And for me, it's really satisfying to buy a small frag, nurture it and watch it blossom, knowing that it's done so because of your skill as a reefer. And many reefers will enjoy the collection side of the hobby that high-end corals of true lineage represents. And while high prices, even on the hobbyist to hobbyist market, is a barrier to entry, it also means you'll probably be able to recoup some or all of your initial outlay over time, and maybe even make a profit if that's your goal. You don't have to charge fellow reefers high prices for frags, particularly if the coral is a relatively fast grower, like many Aquapora are. And if you start selling nice frags to local reefers at reasonable prices, you'll build up a network of fish tank buddies who'll be happy to swap stories about the minutiae of the hobby a lot more than your other half will. And if you don't fancy the hassle of selling privately, most local fish shops will be happy to exchange frags for store credit, particularly if you're taking them something they won't otherwise be able to get hold of. Second generation corals are also kinder to the oceans. Wild capture and mariculture can be done sustainably, and I personally would love to see more ethically run coral farms growing and fragging their own corals in local waters without taking new corals from the reefs. But it's hard to argue that growing corals by aquaculture, i.e. on land-based farms, isn't less demanding on the world's reefs. So those are the main pros and cons. But what do I actually think? Well, I don't like the trend for crazy names leading to higher prices, and I think it's a shame when hobbyists sell frags to fellow hobbyists at or close to shop prices. And I simply wouldn't buy a coral if I thought the photo had been taken through an orange lens or had the saturation cranked right up in editing. And frankly, some of the prices are so far beyond my budget that I just couldn't afford them. And in any event, I'd rather buy 5 to 10 awesome corals for the same price as one mega awesome miniature coral. But overall, for the reasons I've mentioned, I personally feel more comfortable paying £150 for a small, second generation frag than I do paying the same money for a wild caught colony. To my eye, that gives me a better chance of my tank looking exactly the way I want it. And if my available tank real estate is low, there's real value in filling the limited available space with only the most awesome corals. At the same time though, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and you simply don't need to spend big bucks on corals to have an awesome tank. One of my favourite corals in my tank is a Seriatopora caliendrum. It's a proper beginner SPS coral and it cost me 25 quid, but it looks as good as more or less anything else in the tank. And I've seen some incredible tanks filled solely with beginner friendly soft corals. So don't let me or anyone else tell you you need to spend big bucks to have an awesome tank. At the same time, I don't judge anyone for paying what I consider to be crazy prices for small frags. I totally get the attraction and you can bet your bottom dollar that I'd do the same if I had the budget. So there you have it then, they are my thoughts on the price of corals, but I'd love to know what you think, so let me know in the comments section below, and as ever, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week, and until next time, happy reefing.